So CNN keeps living in la-la land, pretending that irrelevant losers are relevant in 2020. Uh, here's John Kasich basically fishing for praise so he can get his ego stroked. So let me ask you this. As you know, one of your former Republican colleagues, former governor of Massachusetts, William Weld, he's in the race as a Republican to challenge this Republican president. He's encouraging other Republicans to, to join him, including yourself. Uh, I want to ask you this. When a sitting U.S. president, Republican, has an 89 percent approval rating within his party, can a GOP challenger make a credible run against him? <laughs> Jim, if, if he's got 89 percent approval, why would you think there's a credible chance right yeah. now? That's but my that's point. So have, you about have, you, have you eliminated that no, uh, possibility? I, I, uh, no. It's, look, every, look, one thing we know about this time and about politics in general is what's true today is not necessarily true tomorrow. You know, I've been saying all along, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look, first of all, I'm on CNN. My job here is not to be promoting myself. My job here is to do an analysis. And I think I've been very fair since I've been on this the, the air. I've, you know, I've been, I've been direct about Democrats. I've been direct about Republicans. I, the, the deal for me personally is... So if I'll ask you to be win, direct, and, and, and I respect that because, because yeah, you I, I don't, very I don't know, Jim. Not, Are you not ruling it I out? I haven't made any... I've, all of my options remain on the table. When the time okay. comes when I make a final decision, you're going to be one of the first million to know. <laughs> I'll, maybe that you could be. Okay, I'll tell no, you, you what. You gave a I'll straight answer. I'll put you in the I'll first hundred thousand because I like okay. you. That's about. I'll listen, let people that... know. But this is this is look. What I'm interested in now, getting this report out, having having this clear the air and move on to issues that are critically important. What are we going to do about the rising costs of health care? What are we going to do in this country about mm -hmm. income inequality? What are we going to do about the environment? Those are the things I'm focused on. I don't wake mm -hmm. up every day looking at polls or thinking about me and my political future. I just want to be a good voice. I'll tell you what, what my voice yeah. is, Jim. It's to tell people, stop fixating so much on the big shots and start paying attention to what you can do to change the world where you live. I tell people this mm -hmm. all across this country, and I'm going to continue to do it because power comes from the bottom up, not the top down. So I'm a little bit more interested right now in my neighbors and what I can do as opposed to right. what the heck all these politicians are doing in Washington. I hear you. And I could hear that in a stump speech at some point. I'm just saying. I did hear you say all your options on the table. We'll keep listening. Governor Kasich, thanks You're very much. You're a good much. man, Jim Shuto. Thank Thank you. I'm in the, you. I'm in the top 100,000. I mean, that's, that's you know, higher than I'm I I'm going to move you a little be. closer. I'm going to move you up <laughs> to the top 10. How's right, that? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> yes, lovely establishment banter. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kasich, the world is awaiting your decision. Shall you run against the mean orange president? Who is this segment geared towards? Who's sitting there like, Ugh. I keep checking online, looking for news. Is Kasich going to run or not? Is he going to run or is he not going to run? I actually have an answer for that question. You know who this segment is geared towards? The goofballs on Wall Street. Uh, the goofballs in elitist circles in Washington, D.C. Because they are the only people who yearn for the days of a John Kasich-type character, you know, being a winner. Like, those are the only people who look at a guy like Kasich and they're like, yes, that's what I want. Why? Why do they look at a guy like that? Because he'll do all the same shit Trump is doing, but he'll keep a low profile. He won't do the mean tweets. He'll be very polite. Like, I love how he said, we got to focus on the things that matter, like health care costs and the environment and in income inequality. Yeah, and John, you reliably come out on the wrong side of all of those issues. <laughs> Every one of those issues, you're on the wrong side. You have shitty policies. So it's just, it's so frustrating. Like, only with a broken, corrupt media environment do you get them churning out segments like this as if people in the country are fucking, you know, just anxiously awaiting. What will Kasich say? Will he run again? Dude, he ran last time and he got negative 14 votes. He was doing like victory parties when he came in like second and third and some a few primaries. That's so embarrassing. These guys are fucking weak.
weak establishment bitches who don't understand it's not 1985 or 1992 anymore. He, okay, bottom line is this. He's a creation of the media. Like, his continued relevance is simply from the media. I love how he played coy. Like, I'm just here to talk about the stories. I'm not here to, you know, try to further my career in any way. Yes, you are. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly what you're doing. Hundred percent, what you're doing. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I love how he said, "All of my options remain on the table." Thank you. The only person who cared was the CNN host who was pretending to care. Mister Kasich, at my very expensive dinner that I had last night at a wonderful steakhouse with other people that make two point five million dollars a year or more, they all said, "I wonder if John Kasich will run." It'll be so lovely to have somebody doing all of Trump's policies, but not be a dick about it. I fucking hate these guys, man. Oh, I hate him so much. If the media was really doing their job, they'd have to be adversarial towards power. You know what real, what it would mean to really be adversarial towards power? Uh, doing these kinds of interviews with people who really fight for the people. Doing these kinds of, what are your plans next? With whoever it might be, whether it's Ro Khanna or, um, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Ilhan Omar. Instead, they're always smearing those people who are helping the people, fighting for the people, and fighting against the elites and the establishment. And they take people who are from the establishment and they pretend like, like they're the answer. Like, no, they're part of the problem. Let's understand that. 